Pennsylvania's state system of higher education, 14 universities, infinite opportunities. This week we explore the opportunities available at Indiana University of Pennsylvania. First, we'll hear from University President Michael Driscoll. Hello, I'm Frank Brogan, Chancellor of the Pennsylvania State System of Higher Education. We're going to have the opportunity to speak with one of our campus leaders who's with us and hear a little bit about not only Indiana University, but how Indiana plays a very important role in our entire system and for that matter, the entire Commonwealth of Pennsylvania and beyond. With us today is Dr. Michael Driscoll. Dr. Driscoll is the president of Indiana University. He is the 26th president with a long history at Indiana University. He has a personal great and long history in higher education, serving in a variety of administrative capacities, including most recently before he moved to Indiana as provost of another institution of higher ed. So we're delighted to have you with us today, Dr. Driscoll. And can you start by telling us a little bit about the rich history of IUP and how it's gotten to be part of the bedrock of our higher education system? Well, thank you, Chancellor Brogan, for this chance to chat about my favorite topic, which is IUP. IUP was founded in 1875 as a local normal school to educate teachers. In um, 1965, we were granted university status and began offering our first doctoral programs. And if you fast forward to today, we have about 14,350 students with programs from baccalaureate to PhD in a broad range of disciplines and areas. Indiana is located about an hour's drive from downtown Pittsburgh in the beautiful hills uh, surrounding the town, we have some of the historic coal reserves of the Commonwealth, but perhaps more interest lately is that we're right in the middle of the Marcellus Shale region. So we've seen a lot of changes in the economy lately, and IUP is certainly well engaged in that. So I would just say long tradition of serving our students well, lots of interaction between high quality faculty and students in the classroom, out of the classroom, in the community. Big part of uh, your location, as I like to remind people, is your proximity to Poxitani. And what an exciting opportunity to be within hailing distance of one of the best known locations in all of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Absolutely, although some of us are a little upset with Phil right now in the weather. Um, it's probably worth mentioning that, that IUP, with its primary facility in Indiana, also has facilities in Punxsutawney. We've been there for a long time at North Point in Armstrong County, and we also have a facility in Monroeville just outside of Pittsburgh. So we try to serve the entire region, bringing our high quality education to those very specific locations as well as the, the core in Indiana. You're an academic uh, part of our community in a unique way. You had touched on this a moment ago in that so many of our universities offer baccalaureate degrees and master's degree with growing portfolio in the area of doctoral degrees. But for so many years, Indiana has a proud tradition of doctoral degree granting programs. Can you tell us a little bit about what it's like to head up a university that has that sort of broad swath of academic and degree offerings? Well, I, I think that's a great question. And the first thing that I would highlight is this means that our faculty are actively engaged in research. They are moving ahead in the state of knowledge, in the application of knowledge in their specific disciplines. But there's something special about the teacher-scholar model that our faculty practice at IUP, and that is that they bring that high quality research directly to our students. You're not going to be in a classroom with a teaching assistant giving you the instruction. You're going to be working with that world-class researcher who's bringing that to you as a student. And also, you're going to have a chance to maybe work with that professor in the lab, write a new paper, get it published, be out there. Our students as undergraduates regularly present at national academic conferences. And one of my favorites is a young woman in chemistry who recently won the best paper award in San Francisco 
as an undergraduate. It was a graduate conference, and she, she won that. She's going on to do great things. That's just one example of that kind of interplay that happens at a doctoral research university that's unique, and we are very proud of that fact. Well, having been here for about a year and a half as chancellor, I've been very impressed with so many things. One of the things of which I'm most impressed is how undergraduate research is becoming an important part of what all 14 of our universities do. People stereotypically and understandably believe that research is reserved for a doctoral degree uh, programs or even graduate studies, but more and more across the country, higher education is adopting the research model within undergraduate education, and I know you're doing work in that. Uh, I, 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 th I think it's important for everyone to recognize, maybe remember, that when they learned the best, it was when they were actively engaged, excited, and motivated. And there's nothing more engaging than sitting down with a new problem. Maybe no one knows the answer to the problem. And you're being asked to engage in that work with professionals who are experts in the area. Nothing is more exciting. And I think that's an important part of why we work hard to provide experiences for our students in the classroom, but also out of the classroom. Whether it's a leadership opportunity or it's in a laboratory, we want folks to be practicing what they're learning to get that excitement to really reinforce the lessons. Well, one of the things I really admire about you is your focus on student life. Uh, having been a president and working now with 14 others, uh, you can't eff emphasize the world of student life enough, that experience that a student has from the time they walk into one of our universities until the time they walk off that graduation stage. Talk a little bit about student life as a very important part of the future of IUP. First, I have to talk about our facilities as I talk about student life. Certainly where you live and work has an impact on the quality of your experience. We, in the last 10 years, have replaced our old student dormitories with new suite-based living. We called it residential revival. Students love that. We have about 4,000 of our 14,000 plus students living on campus. Those facilities are the basis for what we call living learning communities where students, maybe they're in nursing, are all living on the same floor. So they're studying together, going to class together, helping each other out, and also learning how to work with other people, which is a, is a key part of success in the world today. You have to have the, the book learning and you have to have the skills that you get in the classroom, but you also have to be able to work in a team of people to do the right thing and move ahead. And, and that's one of the key things that we do. We engage our students in housing, but in other ways, whether it's a fraternity or sorority, providing leadership on campus, whether it's intercollegiate athletics, uh, intramural athletics, whether it's the chance that you have to be part of a student club or opportunity to be a leader in that area, or again, back to the fundamental, maybe you're going to do some interesting library research in Europe as part of our study abroad program. Again, bringing those real world experiences in. You touched on this earlier and that was the concept of what I call going over the wall of higher education. Not only uh, taking care of business on campus, but also getting faculty and students outside of the university to practice what we preach on campus, give people an opportunity uh, to engage in their work elsewhere for the broader community. And I know IUP has a long, rich tradition in that regard. I, I think that's, that's wonderful. I like to talk about universities not having walls. And in fact, that uh, we provide this wonderful opportunity for our students, but we also bring their expertise to places that need it. We have, for at least the last four years, been on uh, the U.S. President's honor roll for community service, which says that our students are out there. Well, maybe they're working for a local agency. Maybe they're doing an internship at a bank or in another business that gives them the opportunity to walk out the door in a, into a great job but they're also providing real value to the community while they're studying and still learning. And that's something that a university can provide and that we're strongly dedicated to, both in the area right around Indiana, but across Pennsylvania, across the country, and we have students that have served around the world. Well, I'm very impressed by the visioning that you're doing at IUP, the knowledge that as great as has the history of IUP been, its next 20 years is being developed 
right now as we speak and the work that you are all doing in creating strategic visioning for the university, academic programs, the facility needs of the future, the, that's all been very uh, impressive to me and tell us a little bit about how you're working with the people at IUP to develop that vision. One of the things I'm very, very proud of within this is that as we look to the future and try to determine as a community what we needed to focus on, we didn't turn to an expensive consulting firm to come in and write the strategic plan for us, to build our vision for us, but I turned to students in our journalism department, led by a faculty member, and I said, I want hundreds of people involved in this process. I want to hear what people are thinking about our future, and they took it up and did it. So they took a class that was going to go left, and they sort of went right with this opportunity. They spent a lot of time on it, and we ended up with a final um, uh, count of probably around 1,000 people engaged in the process in various ways, and about 400 people from the community, from campus, came to a wrap-up summit to help us finalize where we thought we were going. And those were facilitated sessions by students. And so that's another great example of this real learning that's happening at IUP. Now, within that, we recognize that we need to make sure that we're continuing to provide those academic programs that meet the needs of Western Pennsylvania, of Pennsylvania, and faculty members push me to say, and the world beyond. And we're really trying to do that. We just had approved in December uh, five new tracks in our College of Business to address the energy industry, energy management, finance for energy, and that's just the beginning of a number of new opportunities that we have coming related to what are clearly the needs of Western Pennsylvania, but that will grow beyond that. We want to make sure that our students have jobs where they want to live, jobs that meet the needs of Pennsylvania, so that we're not bringing in somebody to run our state for us from somewhere else and then take their paycheck home. Well, the history of IUP is so incredibly deep and rich, but it's hard not to get excited about the future of Indiana University. And Dr. Mike Driscoll, thank you so much for spending time with us and our best to the faculty, uh, the students, and the staff of Indiana University. Thank you very much. Coming up next, explore more opportunities offered at the Indiana University of Pennsylvania. Invest in me. 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 I'll be your future public servant. I'll be your future advertising executive. I'll be your future accountant. I will be your future motivational speaker. I'll be your future lawmaker. I will be your future teacher. Invest in me. I'll be your future videographer. Welcome back to Infinite Opportunities. Next, we'll see how IUP students training to be future educators learn to use art integration as a teaching tool. Although the, the majority of our uh, artist residencies take place in public schools, um, we decided we need to take another tact and with IUP College of Education having such a national reputation for quality educators, we thought we needed to look at how we can influence those future educators with arts integration. What the concept was behind this residency was that we would work with non-art educators and get them excited about the idea of what arts could do in their um, curriculum. In a developmentally appropriate classroom, play is an acceptable way of teaching children. And so it's very important that um, teachers are prepared to give them the kinds of experiences that they need, including play. 
and that's very important right now because it seems as though there's such an emphasis on testing. I knew I could offer them techniques that they could easily incorporate in the classroom that would boost their kids' self-esteem, not crush it, and not make it so that they compare themselves with others, but consider their own art unique and worthwhile. She stressed a lot about process over product, which means you know having fun with the way that you make it rather than trying to make something that's technically perfect or technically good. And especially because I'm going to be working with students with disabilities, a lot of them aren't going to really have the ability to make a product that might not look up to par with other students on their grade level. So it's so much more important to focus on how they feel and how they're working on it rather than what it looks like at the end. Over the course of all the art experiences, the paint intensive experiences that I gave them, um, I noticed that you know one by one they were becoming more relaxed with just enjoying the process and the expression. I looked forward going to that class just to like sit down and paint, you know, not have to sit there and copy notes from a PowerPoint or from the board. And I can imagine children feel the same way. It definitely gave me a better perspective on why art is so important, especially in the early grades. It gave me so much more reasons about why and how it related to their cognitive development, which is sort of a more scientific and more concrete reason why we should be doing art programs in schools. There were a variety of changes that I saw in my students as they learned about arts integration and using art in the classroom. The students who thought it would be an okay thing uh, seemed to, by the end of the experience, really buy into, well, this isn't just an okay thing, it's a fabulous thing, and this really works, and they could see how they could apply some of those techniques in the classroom. And the students who were very skeptical and had no desire to participate in the experience came around. One of them in particular took almost the entire residency to come around, but when she did, it was a fabulous light bulb experience and you could just, you could see the transformation take place in her. And by the end of the experience, she was probably one of the strongest advocates for arts integration in the class. And there was the one last holdout <laughs> who just, was so frustrated she did not want to even do the project but when we were doing the collaborative painting and her square was the one that was left she set aside time to do that and it came out so beautifully her colors were so soft and fleshy compared to all the other kids you know she, I think she became inspired seeing that her own square was had a unique beauty, beautiful quality of its own and she literally said that she was going to go home and buy paint. <laughs> I said, yes, we did it. Next, we'll learn how future chefs develop their skill through the culinary arts program at Indiana University of Pennsylvania. I decided to come to IUP because I did an open house here and everybody was just so nice and they basically like welcomed me as if I was already a student and I just love that. I chose IUP after doing research into a couple different culinary schools and the hands-on approach taken here at the school as well as the great externship offers uh, really made me decide on coming here. Our mission here at IUP Academy of Culinary Arts is to train culinarians with the skill and the knowledge to become chefs, pastry chefs, and managers and food and beverage directors. The faculty is awesome. I have gotten to know each one of them very well and I consider each one of them my friends. I think the faculty provides excellent instruction. I, everything is very thorough, very in-depth. The faculty here at IEP are, are really, really strong. They're outstanding chefs and real out, outstanding instructors and faculty. Uh, they come here and they don't leave here usually unless they're going to retire. The strengths of our faculty have that industry experience combined with their delivery of education. They truly do care like how far you go and um, they want every one of us to succeed. The small class sizes benefit, I believe it benefits the students because we're actually doing all the work. We're watching the chefs do it, we're learning how to do it, and then we're actually making everything. The program is preparing me each day for what I should expect in the industry. Our externship is at the end of our programs, and the reason for that is, is uh, that the employers 
and the student uh, can make a decision to stay on for permanent employment. The students have to research where they want to go. It's not just, you know, and they find the placement. We're not just putting them out there. The chefs and the human resource people that come here to IUP to hire and interview our students are coming from the, some of the best resorts and properties in the world, not just in the nation. I did my externship at Vanilla Pastry Studio in Regent Square, Pittsburgh. Um, after I had completed my externship, I was offered a full-time position, and I am still currently working there. Coming here to IUP made me look at food differently. It made me appreciate food a lot more. Our students are focused, they're motivated, they're self-disciplined, they're passionate about what they're doing. We want our students to eat, think, sleep food 24 hours a day while they're here. It definitely surpassed my expectations and I'm really glad I came and I can honestly say that I love this industry and that IUP prepared me for it. Success. We see it every day. Choose from hundreds of majors and programs. Learn from faculty truly committed to you and your success today and tomorrow. And join 120,000 alumni in thousands of careers all over the world, ready to help you find your way. I'm IUP President Mike Driscoll, and I invite you to apply now and find your success at Indiana University of Pennsylvania. Welcome back to Infinite Opportunities. Next, we'll see how students at Indiana University of Pennsylvania are learning to treat and prevent a serious sports injury through the Concussion Management Program. Simply put, concussion is an injury to the brain. Now, these injuries can range from very minor, where the athlete clears very quickly and there's very little damage to the brain tissue itself, or it can be quite serious, where the brain is what we would call concussed, and this brain trauma can last for prolonged periods of time. Here at IUP, we have a multifaceted program in order to manage our concussions. When's it best to return an athlete back to sport? That's always been a, an issue. Sometimes we can make a diagnosis of concussion, but when is it safe for that athlete to go back? And we obviously want them to go back as safely as possible and also as soon as possible. So now we have some new tools that allow us to do that. One of them is the uh, computer-based program that we use here at IUP. A lot of the professional teams use them in football, baseball, hockey. Actually, IUP has been using the neurocognitive testing since 2002. We started doing baseline testing on all of our football players in 2004, and our women's and men's basketball players have been baseline since 2005. Uh, we use this just to make sure that the brain is functioning. Uh, one of the other things that this program does is it actually has uh, a section in it where they give us all of their symptoms. Basically, it's a symptom inventory. So it asks them, have they, do they have a headache? Do they have uh, nausea? Have they vomited? Um, are they irritable? Do, are they sad? I was on second base and went to go steal third. I dove in to steal instead of slide in feet first, and the way that I landed caused a, my head to kind of whiplash, and then that caused the concussion. I continue to play the game. I really didn't feel much different. It started to hit me about an hour after the game. First thing I went to do was saw uh, my trainer, uh, Jess. Uh, at that point, she first, one of the first things she had me do was just take the impact test. I took the impact test. My memory composite scores were very low. Memory, my memory scores in pretty much all categories were very low. If the, the measures weren't taken that were, uh, I may have just, you know, the education they've given us from the square one, they give us a form, they show us videos about things that could happen if you play while you're still symptomatic, I may have just returned to play and uh, subjected myself to further damage. Once you've been diagnosed with a concussion, the brain goes through a healing phase, and during that healing phase is also the brain is very vulnerable. If you were to get hit again during this vulnerable state, you could develop something called second impact syndrome, which could be very, very devastating. There's a number of goals we consider concussion management. One is the protection of athletes, but secondly, here at IUP, we have to also consider the development of our young professionals, our students that are going to go out into the field and treat and be on the front line for care of concussion. Well, here today we're simulating an athlete who has a suspected head injury, who is either non-responsive or unconscious. 
Uh, so a lot of the things that we can practice in the classroom setting as far as memory and amnesia and, and clinical reasoning and so forth, we can't necessarily uh, do with an unconscious patient. So here we can mimic um, having to take vital signs, looking at pupillary reaction, assessing breathing rates, so forth, things that uh, then we, we put a sole scenario together, they then have to make decisions as far as what's the next course of action. I believe that the collaboration we have with a number of other professionals in the field, being our medical directors, team physicians, both our clinical and curriculum athletic trainers, as well as our nursing department, the many um, facilities and resources they can provide, helps us to greatly prepare our student athletic trainers in the care of sports-related injury and concussion. Next, we'll meet one alumnus who achieved success in the entertainment industry. My name is Howie Bagosa, and I am a designer for Disney Interactive Studios. So I design video games, specifically um, Club Penguin, uh, which is a virtual world for kids. And I basically am in charge of creating art assets for this game and basically making the game look fun and exciting and uh, approachable for kids. So I was never an actual graphic design major, but I didn't let that stop me from pursuing what I wanted to do. As a communications media major, I tried to look for mentors to help facilitate the dreams that I wanted to pursue. One of my mentors in particular was Dr. Drew Davidson, and he showed me that not only could I dream about being a graphic designer for video games and working in the video games industry, um, he showed me how to get there, you know. And that was a really big step for me, um, knowing that I had a dream, but also the map and the, the path to walk on to get to, to that position. Going to IUP has helped me, you know, dip my feet into many, many different disciplines and interests and that has really helped me out a lot um, in my career. You would think that being a dance minor has absolutely nothing to do with anything, right, except dance. But that experience alone at IUP has helped me become an animator for Disney. Getting a sense of timing and movement translates really well from dance to animation. The class sizes at IUP are really small, but sitting uh, in a smaller class and getting a lot of attention from your professors, amazing. Like, it's hard, it's difficult to really engage and absorb the knowledge that a professor gives to you in a large setting. One of the things that I really enjoyed about the small settings was that I was able to find good mentors. Dr. Lambersky, uh, Dr. Drew Davidson, uh, these people have all molded me and shaped me into becoming this fierce, you know, professional and uh, really pursue my dreams. Growing up, our family didn't have a lot of money and school and college was almost uh, a pipe dream. IUP gave me that chance. I would not be where I am today if it weren't for the people at my college who placed their faith in me. Come back next week to learn more of the infinite opportunities at the state system's 14 universities or visit us online 